Hey everyone, Drew with GeoArm and I am back to talk to you about the 2GIG GC2E and getting a DW10E-345 wireless door window contact, which is encrypted of course, connected and programmed into this 2GIG GC2E. Super easy to do. Uh, we're going to go ahead and hit security on the main screen here. Once you're into security, go ahead and hit menu and then you want to go into toolbox. Once you're in Toolbox, it's asking you here for your installer code. Mine is factory of 1561. That should get us into programming. Once in programming, go ahead and hit that right arrow twice. We're going to get into Installer Toolbox here. Once you get into Installer Toolbox, you should be able to see here, see System Configuration. All right, now once you hit System Configuration, the first available zone, or zone one actually, is going to appear on the screen. Um, my, that's my first available zone, but for, for the sake of this video, I'm just going to go ahead and move it to zone three. You just hit the right arrow to change what zone number you want to program on. In this case, it is zone three. All right, so we'll go ahead and we'll hit the down arrow. It's asking the sensor three type. I am on sensor three right now, and it just wants to know what its responsibility is going to be. This is going to be my front door, so I do want that to have a little bit of a delay on it, so that way when everybody comes in and out of the door, it's not immediately triggering the alarm uh, and you know causing a false alarm condition. So I'm putting an entry exit delay on this. Uh, you can also set it as an instant, and in that case, you would set it as a perimeter if it is an instant type device. In my case, it will be delayed, my front door. I'm going to hit the down arrow. Now. It's going to ask you to select the equipment code. These are, are unique because the E-Series doesn't program like the other ones. The equipment codes on E-Series sensors will start with the number 2. So in this case, the equipment code is 2862, which is the E-Series thin door and window contact. And once again, that equipment code is 2862 for the E-Series thin door window contact. Press the down arrow after you've selected that. It's going to ask you if you want this device to act as a normally open device. I do not. Press the down arrow. Now, this is where we're going to learn it in. It wants you to either manually enter the serial number or learn it in. I suggest learning it in just because then you know the system has uh, acknowledged it and is accepting it. So I'm going to grab my contact here, which of course I have on the side with the uh, three perforations. That's where the magnet goes. So I'm going to leave it sitting like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to hit shift on the uh, touchscreen itself. Once you hit shift, you'll see a bunch of new menus pop up over on this side. We're going to hit learn. Once we hit learn, we're just going to remove the contact from the magnet, put it back, and then it should automatically learn in. We'll go ahead and we'll confirm that our TXID is the correct TXID, and it is 0408543 in this case. We'll put this thing down. You're going to hit OK. After you've done that, you've confirmed the serial number is correct, you go ahead and you hit the down arrow. Now this is a new device, so I am going to leave it as a new device. If it's a used device, you can press the right arrow and set it as existing. But this is new. Now you press the down arrow, it's going to come to a question about loop numbers. This is a, 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 a actual question on here that gets a lot of uh, you know misinformation or, or whatever may happen. But the loop number for this device sitting by itself just like this without anything else connected to it, it will be a loop 2 device. This will be operating as a wireless loop 2 device. Now the, the way that the loop would change in this regard is if you had to wire an external wired device into this because it does accept external wired devices. So you could wire a hardwired door window contact that would be monitored through this wireless device if you want. And if you did that, it would become a loop 1 instead of a loop 2. So we're going to leave it at loop 2 because I'm leaving it operational as is. We're going to hit the down arrow. Now it wants to know if you would like an additional delay on this device before it reports to the central station. I don't like that, so I'm not going to do it. I'm going to go ahead and press the right arrow to disable that. Then I'm going to hit the down arrow. At this point, I want you to construct your voice description. Uh, this is where it gets a little tricky. Uh, this is one of the more complicated things about doing it, but uh, it's still not very difficult. What you're going to do is you're going to hit insert. When you hit insert, the word abort is going to appear on there. You just keep pressing the right arrow until you get to your desired descriptor. In this case, it's going to be front door. So I just keep hitting the right arrow until I get to front. Sorry for the delay here. It is a long way to get to it. All right, and we have front, and then we're going to insert again, and then we're just going to go to door. 
keep hitting the right arrow until you go to door. You can also scroll the other way if you're going into the uh, other side of the alphabet. But All right, so now I have front door in there. Now that that's in there, I'm going to hit the down arrow. And it's going to ask if you want this to report. I do want it to report because whenever this device goes off, I want it to send a signal to Central Station. Now, if you're setting up like a local type device or something like that, you can just press the right arrow and disable reporting. Then this device is only going to be local. It's not going to report to anyone. So in this case, I do want it to report. So I'm going to hit the down arrow. All right. And then this question is asking if you'd like the system to supervise this device. So it's going to be monitoring for low battery, for tamper conditions, uh, loss of RF supervision, that kind of thing. So that's what this device is going to be doing with this field. So I do want that. So we're going to leave that and press the down arrow. Now this is where it's going to ask if you want it to chime. I actually do want it to chime. I'm, I'm going to use the chime and the voice description. So it's going to chime and then say what the zone is. Uh, and that is zero two. So I'm going to set that up and then I'm going to hit the down arrow. At this point, you've wrapped up the programming of your system, of your sensor, I'm sorry. Uh, so you can continue editing or adding sensors by clicking edit next. Uh, or you can re-edit, you know, the fields in this one by clicking edit current. I don't want to do either one of those. I'm just going to hit skip. And then I'm going to hit end because I don't want to do any more programming. At this point, it's going to prompt you with another field and it's going to have a little save changes uh, icon at the bottom with a check mark. I do want to save changes. If you were in programming and you don't really know what you did and you don't want to save your changes, just uncheck that and then you're going to hit exit. At this point, it's going to go through its reboot here and it once it comes back up, this device will be learned in. So we're just going to wait for that reboot to occur here. All right, and now that we have this device back here and it's powered back on, after it's reboot, we can just test this. So remove it, there we go. Okay, let's close it and we'll open it again just to test it. All right, and that ladies and gentlemen is how you program the DW10E-345 wireless encrypted door window contact into the 2 gig GC2E security system. If you guys have any questions or any comments, please leave them below. Other than that, take care and have a great day. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube page and click the show more tab underneath the video where you can view valuable links pertaining to this product, similar how-to videos, and our low-cost, no-contract alarm monitoring services.